Hi everybody. Uh, Adam said earlier that this was not his normal thing, it's not mine either. I'm feeling a little bit like the first Christian thrown to the lions at the moment. Uh, my background, yes, I'm a carpenter. I've kept on my fingers, but I've lost a bit of me somewhere, especially uh, mentally. The building industry is not a great industry to be in most of the time. Uh, a little, I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey about what we're doing and, and, and uh, how it came about. A little bit of me's in there, and there's a little bit of a few other people. Uh, I am, as you can see, a relic of the 60s and 70s. I was there in the peace and love days, and I'm still there. <laughs> And I just want to let you know it's not substance induced. <laughs> so yes, I'm still there. Uh, not too much about me, but the region I come from is Kingaroy, which is the Burnett region. Some quick demographics. Uh, the Burnett is 28 million hectares, quite a large area. Has 44,000 population, 11 towns, 11 villages, and then quite a distribution of small hamlets. So it's quite a vast area. Predominantly it's agriculture, but saying that it imports or re-imports 93% of its food needs. So that's a little bit about us. We're also geographically and politically aligned with the Fraser Coast and the White Bay region. So I guess that's why I'm here. The blame game. This time every year I get together with friends and we start to plan for our pilgrimage to Woodfordia. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what Woodfordia is, it's a lovely little village that springs up once a year and all the old hippies gather and hopefully we influence some new ones. <laughs> During this process of, of packing the stoves and the refrigeration, etc., wines flow and beer flows and the subject starts on politics and who's to blame, what's wrong with the world, whose fault is it, etc, etc. And we do it all the time and I dare say most of you in the room do it too. Then in uh, December 2010, going through this procedure, it suddenly hit me that I'm guilty too. I'm at fault because I have done nothing to make a difference. I've done nothing to introduce change. And when we look at the situation and we look at who has the power for change, it's us. It's all you people. We have the power to make change. It's no good looking at who created it. That's too hard. Right? We've got to look at what we can do about making the changes. And that's what started my journey since then. That moment created in me a need, a desire, a passion to see what I could do to bring about that change for this for the region. I actually had no idea what I was going to do. I just know that I felt guilty enough that I needed to do something. So that started an investigation and a need then to connect to community. So at the Woodford, I met a few interesting people like Bob Peking from Food Connect, a man who's made great changes in the way we handle food, etc., and a few other people. So April that year, we held, just a few, few of us put together, a community gathering, a sustainable future community gathering, to find out how the community felt about what changes needed to be made. Because it's okay to have an idea, but if that idea doesn't connect with your community, it's just not going to work. So we went to the community first. What the community came back with, we had over three, four hundred people that weekend come through. We had nine presenters. Uh, all of them gave their time free. So it was a brilliant weekend. We put on a big dinner on a Saturday night that was all local produce, etc., etc. From that connection, we discovered what we needed to do to make change and make a difference. And that's where the vision came from. Now I know that hippies have a lot of visions. <laughs> but this one was a very sober vision. We looked at what the people, we listened to what the people said and we looked at our community. And the problems we were having are the same as what you're having here. 
We are a low socioeconomic area. We have high unemployment. We have very poor literacy and numeracy skills. Right? So we looked at those and thought, how do we change that? And we looked at the infrastructure that existed. We didn't go outside and look at what we could bring in, what new businesses we could bring into the area. We looked at what was there, the assets that were there, the existing assets. That assets, those assets, agriculture, our natural environment, and our communities. So that's where we started from. And we wrote a bit of a draft plan about how we wanted to connect all these things together. And that took a little while to pull that together. And then we went back to the communities again. And as I said before, there's quite a few towns and hamlets, etc. around. So we did 16 forums to introduce ourselves to the people and get some feedback. And we did four workshops in about six weeks. And we covered the whole area, the small towns, the big ones, etc. And then we spent the next three months and we produced the plan. Part of that plan was also part of a collaboration. We need to know, not just from the community, but from different levels of government, uh, from the local, local councils, from other organisations. We needed their input. We needed to know what they thought about our ideas. Some of them didn't think very much of it. Some of them said we've got to be joking. But we used all that information, and then we looked outside the region. And we discovered people that were trying to do similar things in other regions. And they were much more advanced than us. So we brought them in and collaborated with them to gain more and more info. So at the end of it, we had quite a good plan. The idea was there, and it was the next step. But the big thing is change. You know, people are very, very scared of change. Oops, I'm going to skip that one. Excuse that one's gone. But <laughs> Change is, is, I do some really stupid little things in my life. I do a lot actually, but one of them is I like to measure bad words and things like that. So change on my top 10 chart of misused words is number three. Number one is I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Number two is I love you, but I really do love you. And number three is I promise I'll change. And number four is promise. So change is a word that people are really sceptical about. They stand back and they stand off. But we still need to, it's, an, it's a really powerful word if you can do it right. If you talk about change for too long, people get bored with it. Change is an action word. So they want to see some action to go with the word. So we continued on more and more dialogue, etc., with the community, and we got to a stage where we had to make a stand. Change is action, so we needed some action. 2013 for our organisation is the year of action. Because we're having problems getting people to come on board to grow food, we're going to grow it. So we can demonstrate to those people how easy it is. Because people say you can't market it, we're going to market it. So we're going to start those action things to back up the dialogue. Dialogue has limitations. Constantly, constantly with people. You know, we have these meetings, and as Adam said before, they didn't want just another talk fest. You know, and people do get sick of hearing about these things. So dialogue has a massive amount of limitations to it unless you can connect it to the action. The legacy of action. Action is one of those things that, I know obviously none of us have passed away yet, but when normally after someone's passed away and there's the wake and you sit around, uh, people will say, do you remember when he did this or she did this or she did that or he did that? They very rarely talk about what you said. They talk about what you did. And that's the most important legacy you can leave in life, is what you did. That's the action. You have to do it, but you have to keep the dialogue going with it. Waiting for the world to change. A few of you would know John Mayer, the singer from America, has a song out called Waiting for the World to Change. How long do we have to wait? 
Just, we can't wait any longer. We have to make those changes now. I bet everybody in this room has an idea for change. But everybody here has a little idea that's budding in there how we can make the world a better place. Some of them are probably big, big, great big visions and big ideas. <coughs> but we need people to stop thinking about the things and actually coming into play and doing it. Waiting for the world to change will not change the world. We need to do it. We need to be doing people. We need to get off our butts and go and try it. It's not easy. I think it was Einstein, I heard yesterday, it was Einstein that said you need to put more energy into change it than the original thought? <laughs> the original idea? Well, it does take a lot of energy. Since this started, which we've been officially an organisation since June <coughs> last year, it's basically consumed me up to 50 hours a week. And there's 11 of us on our steering committee. Right? It will just take you over. But it's a brilliant thing when you can see your community start to respond. Certainly there are those people who are going to say, no, it's rubbish or whatever. But gradually people come on board, people listen, people want to be part of. We started a, a, a newsletter, a monthly newsletter. That's now reaching approximately 1,500 people, and that's in a year. And that's also connected to groups in Malangi, Sunshine Coast, Gimby Gold, and all those people are now connecting this. So that collaboration between all those groups that's starting to make the impact. So if I'm going to leave you with a message, and I know I haven't taken 18 minutes because I haven't got away from up the back, I've got five minutes left. Would you like to hear a song? <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, you would not like to hear this song. So if I'm going to leave you with a message that's from my heart, if you have a thought, if you have an idea, go and research it. See if it can work, see if it can make a difference to your community, and then do it. Find people who will work with you and do it. All right? Put it into play within your community. Talk to your council. You, they want innovative, innovative ideas. They want change. And you can change your community bit by bit by every one of you doing a little bit. Right, it's important. So thank you for putting up with me. I'd like to wish you all in very true hippie fashion peace and love. <laughs> and may your God keep you safe on your journey. Thank you. <laughs>